Greetings once again everyone and welcome back to Dark Souls 2. The beleaguered soul you see before you is Pharos the Vagabond. I actually had an absolutely lovely time doing my cosplay of Faram, the God of War, and decided to pick out another character from the uh, lore to play through the game with. I found that the gimmick's really fun and it allows you to kind of make some interpretations and play within a certain style of the game. I'm also going to be keeping the uh, episodes to a marginally shorter length. I, I'm going to try and keep them between a half an hour and 45 minutes just because I've had some complaints about the length of the episodes and I want to try and make it as easy to digest as possible. If you had a keen eye for detail and are paying especially good attention, you can tell by my starting weapon gloves and immense supply of life gems that I started as the explorer character. I believe that's going to be the most appropriate class for a cosplay of Pharaohs the Vagabond, but uh, I don't intend to be sticking with these this light weapon for particularly long. The idea in this run is to be going a quality build with some late game dips into magic, both pyromancy and dark, just because there's only so much points you can spend into quality without really turning yourself into more of a heavy tank build, and I intend to be using light armor the whole way through, even if my weapons are going to tend to be on the either heavy to medium range scale. Specifically, early game weapons are going to be the um, broad bastard sword, yes, that was right. The Bastard Sword and the Bandit Great Axe, just because they're two really heavy, strong weapons that I can get fairly soon. And I'm going to be focusing mainly on really large and mid range weapons, like the Great Sword class weapons, Great Axes, basically anything great and upwards is the plan. I am going to come over here because. I kind of just want to have a little bit more of a full clear to get those little extra souls for the beginning. Um, I don't know exactly how this run is going to start out with because I rarely start as the explorer class, so I just want to be absolutely sure I can get the uh, proper uh, souls by the time I'm meeting Melentia in order to get the covetous silver serpent ring. As such, every little bit helps. Though, it's especially nice to know that I'm not going to need to buy the um, Ferris Lockstone from her because you actually start with one if you choose the Explorer class. That's a particularly nice change, and it should help me a little bit in that I can, instead of spending money on that, spend money on a, whatchamacallit, a Bright Bug, one of the items that they added in the most recent not the most recent, but the, in the first DLC that heavily boosts your damage and defenses and can be an absolute godsend on particularly difficult bosses. Like, if I had been paying attention, I probably would have caved and used one of them in the Elan fight on my Faram playthrough, but I was not, and as you saw, it was a little bit more vexing than it probably should have been. I'm going to kill those two down there because they yield a full thousand souls each and that's just an absolutely amazing amount for the early game. It allows you to get some few levels if that's what you're into as well as making sure that I'm going to have the relevant number of souls when I finally get to Melentia over in the Force of the Fallen Giants. One of the other nice things about starting as a explorer is that you start with a supply of witching urns, which can either be used to make short work of some of the enemies over in the Forest of the Fallen Giants, as I've already shown you on my Faram playthrough, but it also does very good damage versus these ogres. So long as you kite back properly, you can stay out of their range and just get some really nice damage off. I dodged kind of the wrong direction there because I want to be heading over towards the tree rather than the the fallen tree rather than the hollow, just because darting into the hollow can make it very difficult to hit these witching urns. You always want to make sure you have a direct path back because if you're not paying attention, using the witching urns can really get you caught in a little bit of a bind if they try to go for a, a grabbing attack. 
That's him down. And now that there's only one of them left, I can bait him into the sitting attack repeatedly. Or, actually, he might fall off the edge if I'm particularly lucky. Mm, it doesn't seem to want to. As you can see, the thrust attacks do a ton of damage to him, as well as doing even more damage due to the dagger's 50% counter hit. So the dagger can actually be an incredibly strong weapon for fighting these ogres early game. Especially since you get a guaranteed dagger in every run. So it's just something to keep a note on and have in your arsenal in case you're having a little bit of difficulty with these guys. But there we have it. That's 35,000 souls. Oh, 3,500 souls to start off the game with. And that'll be a really really nice amount because I you know in fact if I burn the uh, proud knight soul the soul of a proud knight that you get from the fire pit with the fire longsword I believe I can actually get all of the souls I need before my first encounter with her maybe just a little less but I think that'll actually be exactly right come on over here and grab all of this especially because I'm an explorer class I think it's fitting that I'm gonna go around gathering everything and while it might not all come in handy it's certainly nice to have at least for the sake of adaptability I guess let me just check yeah the explorer is also a really nice class to start as because they actually start with a full 90 adaptability so that's two extra iframes over the standard character start that's going to allow you to have a much, much easier time of rolling through things. I know that I always have a little bit of difficulty whenever I start a new character, so those, those few extra frames may actually come in quite handy. I'm going to be holding on to most of the Titanite that I get from the early game just because I have very specific ideas of what I'm going to be using those for, specifically the Bastard Sword and Bandit Great Axe that I'm going to be getting once I head right down there into the into the gutter early game, which is a terrible idea. It's, it's basically because I'm just a sadist, but, you know, this is Dark Souls. That's what you pay for. Thank you for that. Just a few, one more drop here in Medulla before I can get really started on the run. I did use up all of those witching urns killing the first ogre, so that's a little bit sad. I like to save some of those if I can, but there's another five waiting for me over in the Forest of the Fallen Giants, so that's not too big of a deal. Just talk to her, get my Estus, upgrade it once, and I will be on the road again. Ferris the Vagabond is a penchant for exploration, so I suppose it's fitting that I get on my way as fast as possible. Don't actually want to level up. I'm saving all of these souls for Malentia in order to get my greedy, greedy, covetous silver serpent ring, plus one. I get that every run, basically, just because it, it accelerates your run so fast, and it's just a really nice item to have. Get my Estus equipped. Also, something nice is that you start with a bunch of aromatic ooze, which means that I'm probably going to be buffing for most encounters with all the bosses here. Buffs will give me a nice little boost to damage, and uh, I think that I might actually want to go and try parrying some of the bosses. In some of my other runs that have been off camera, I've begun parrying in PvE. I first discovered how useful it could be facing the Drake Blood Knights in the uh, first DLC down in Shulva, and slowly but surely, I've really been adapting that out into my broader playstyle. Not with the fist, of course. I'm still using the very powerful small shields, not the parrying shields, but just any sort of small shield. And if I could get a foot soldier shield, I think that would fit in the build rather nicely. It's kind of worn looking, very beaten up, rugged though, and I think it could really fit the character if I could get that. It's useful in a lot of areas and just the having that parry in your pocket for 
certain bosses and enemies, even in PvE, is just such a useful, useful bit of utility. Admittedly, it's not that good if you want to be damaging the bosses, but it comes out quicker and gives you a little bit more time for stamina recovery instead of rolling through a boss's attack, so that's just something to note. And if you're using a small shield, it actually takes less stamina as well. So it, it has its pros and cons, the main con being the intense risk factor, but I'm a little overconfident sometimes, and I, I really think that it's something that would help out the run a little bit, especially because most of the early game bosses are actually very easy to parry, like the Pursuer. The Pursuer is an absolute breeze to parry. I did actually parry Velstat the other day, and that was really when I started thinking that I could bring that into my playstyle as a really viable option to have in certain boss fights. That was what really pushed me over the top, and I really liked it. I, th I, th I definitely think that it has a place in my playstyle, and with certain builds, especially this Faust the Vagabond build, it could actually be incorporated rather well. Ah, that's the one bad thing about having to start the game with a dagger is that you really lack the damage output for these early fights. But you do have a ton of dagger capacity just because the dagger hits so fast and so consistently. If you grab the stone ring, basically nothing is going to be evading you for long. Get my throwing knives. This may also be a little bit of a consumable heavy playthrough, just because of the numbers of consumables I'm going to be getting. There's plenty all around these first few areas, and as the explorer, it kind of fits into the theme of it. I'm not really sure, one way or the other, where Pharaoh stood on the use of consumables. There's, there just really isn't a whole lot on him, so... It, it's really open to interpretation as far as I can see it. Trade hits there. I don't really know how that happened because it looked like my damage came off much, much later than his. I, th I actually think I should have been staggered out of that, but I'll take it. Coming around. Ah, rolling through those arrows are just so difficult. Arrows in general are fairly difficult to roll through, especially in PvP, but even in PvE. Generally speaking, you want to avoid them by uh, forcing the prediction out of the AI and then just changing your route. But it's very, very difficult in that first little walkway. So it's it's kind of a 50-50 crap shoot whether or not I'm going to get hit there. Definitely want to take him out every single run just because he yields such a mass of souls can be extremely helpful for starting you off. And it's going to be part of the reason I can access Melentia so early. Gonna see, do I have any other weapons I can actually wield beside the dagger? Broken straight sword, mm -mm. Can I wield the yellow quartz shield? I can if I two-hand it, and I'm pretty sure that it actually... Mm. Getting him to stand up is a little bit of a pain, but I'm pretty sure if I two-hand it and actually use its bashing attacks, that I can stagger him while blocking, so we'll see if this works out for me. Yeah. Always be sure to back off, because you, you really cannot skirmish with this guy early game. Your only hope is to keep him staggered, which I could if I had certain other weapons, but right now the idea is just to trade with this shield since I got that first backstab. And there you have it. It's a little bit of a cheese strategy, but it's extremely effective, and it makes sure that you don't waste another Estus in that fight since the actual bash attack counts as blocking. So even if you trade blows, you're going to come out ahead. There we go. I haven't gotten a foot soldier shield drop just yet, but there's always hope for later. 
There we go. It's all about angling yourself to get those multi staggers on both of them in the early game. The thrust attacks are ah the delay on that strike. These great sword wielders are really heinous, but you know, it's part of the plan. It's all part of the game. Here we are. Knock him once. Oh. Managed to Oh, that should have hit both of them. I'm not quite sure how that didn't work, but... Oh, well. One more. He's back up. Get the dash attack to keep him staggered. And let's see what I got. Another throwing knife to replace the one I just used. That's nice. There's the buckler right there, which I might use if I can't get a regular small shield, but I actually don't like the time that it takes for the parry shields to set up. As opposed to a regular small shield, they have more active parry frames, but the delay between parrying and the parry frames becoming active is actually slightly longer on the parry small shields, so that's something to watch out for. If you're used to one or the other, then swapping between the two can be a little bit iffy. And since I've done most of my pairing thus far with the uh, actual small shields, such as the foot shoulder shield or the um, something parma, I don't know, uh, the cleric's parma, I believe, it's one of the spell parry shields. With the buffs to spell parrying in the most recent patch, I've really, really become a fan of those weapons. They're incre no, not weapons, but shields. They're incredibly useful in PvE, and having the option to just completely ignore projectile spellcasts is incredibly useful versus certain NPC invaders. Looking at you, Jester Thomas. I actually can use the hand axe two-handed, and I believe that that'll be a much stronger weapon than the daggers for the next few encounters. Having a sweeping attack rather than the really quick mini staggers is probably going to do me a little bit better, especially because I want to be able to kill the enemies down here with consistency as opposed to hoping that I get the proper counter hits and enough hits to do them in. Wait for him to whiff. Swing, swing, wonderful. Can you actually parry with this? You can, huh. Probably not going to bother with that too much, but it's interesting to note. They gave a lot of weapons uh, parries from two, the two-handed position in Dark Souls 2, and I really... Oh, ow. That was a messed up drop. Oh. Okay, that was a messed up drop too. That's painful. That means I'm going to have to make my way all the way back up there again, so... Oh, well. But this time I can actually just dash through everything, since I've already killed it once and grabbed all the loot. I do want a human again, just to look at that wonderful human face. I mean, how could you not? But, yeah, that's actually a little bit of a frustrating start to the run. Usually that doesn't happen, but, um... Gravity is your biggest enemy in the early game. It has such a chance to just take you out of commission immediately that you really want to be especially careful in areas like that. But I was a little bit cocky just because I've taken that area on so many times that I didn't give it the attention it deserved, and I got shut down because of it. Nope. I wanted to make sure to kill him just for a chance at his shield. I'm probably going to do the same for one of the hollows up here, but... It's not looking like they want to give that to me. There we go. The sweet spot's really nice with the axe as well. It, it's very close, and if you're consistently hitting the sweet spot, you're really just going to be hacking through these early hollows. As you can see, most of them have been just a two-hit, no problem. You don't have anything that I want, but... You might pop up behind me, so you get to face my wrath. Let's see. I was just seeing how fast the sprinting attack on that came out to see when I want to be starting it to interrupt his blow. 
lure them out. Oh, not quite. Whenever I have a low health enemy like that, it, it's just become a sort of natural reaction for me to switch to a fist and punch them. It's a good habit to get yourself into, especially because uh, if you're using really heavy weapons like the great sword or a great axe, because they take very, very large amounts of durability damage, and every little bit counts with those weapons, especially if they have a large overhead attack because the overhead cleaving attacks that a lot of great weapons have will leave them inside of the enemy's dead body after you kill someone with it which just wreaks absolute havoc upon your durability it's just a really 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 powerful way to break your weapon quickly so it's just a uh, habit I picked up from dealing with that I'm gonna be smart this time and give myself a little bit of insurance like this bonfire here just so if I do mess this up again by falling then I will still have the progress I've made thus far and not have to deal with it all the way from that first bonfire mm. there we go I would have punched him but I needed a sweeping attack to kill both of them in one hit so that's how that worked out this is what I meant to do bam come on over Oh, no, no, no. That was... This is just not turning out well for me. And they still don't want to give me that drop. I could equip the Explorer's Hat in order to... The Merchant's Explorer's Hat, whatever you want to call it, in order to increase their drop chance, but I rate Fashion Souls above all else, so... That's not really an option, in my opinion. Would not give me the roll, but I'll take it anyways. It's not a lot of health damage. There we go. Nothing from these two. Uh, there's going to be two more shield hollows before I head up to Melentia again. But if they don't give me the drop, then I'm pretty much SOL for my chances. I don't think Melentia sells it either, so that's kind of sad. If you can delay your hit just a slight amount, then you can actually tag both of them. Do we get it? Do we get it? Ah, I saw foot soldiers and I immediately got excited and then I saw a sword and immediately my face fell. But the foot soldier sword's a cool weapon. It's got a lot of poise damage, but its durability is absolute crap and it's probably worse than a regular sword in every other manner other than it has a lot of thrusting attacks. So it can be useful in certain situations, but now that they added the Ashen Knight Sword from the DLC, it's probably just going to be relegated to Joke Weapon again, since the Ashen Sword has a very similar moveset and the same poise damage, but much higher actual damage, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong. I don't quite recall now that I mention it, but it also has a little bit of bleed, so it probably has higher utility even though they both have terrible durability. It's just something to be considering when you're choosing how to build your character. Turns out I'm not going to have to waste the actual Proud Knight Soul because I died and had to clear again, but uh, that means I'm only going to have to use a Tiny Soul, which is rather preferable in my opinion. Use this Soul of a Nameless Soldier, and that's 10,000 souls. I can get Melentia's little reward. And that's all I'm going to be needing her for. Mm. I might actually want the Cestus as an offhand weapon because I am going to be building quality, but it just doesn't seem to fit the build. So I'm actually going to say no to that. Grab one of those, one of those. I'm only going to buy one of these because I want to get more consumables just to fit the character that's the ring and now I can just clear through all of her dialogue there we go let's see now I want to be using yeah you can see the foot soldier sword only has 20 durability that is absolutely terrible 
It's back to the dagger, and we'll keep the hand axe as an alternate. Actually, strike that, reverse it. Let's let's keep the dagger in our main hand, and have the hand I mean the hand axe in our main hand with the dagger as an alternate. The small leather shield is what I'm going to be going with for these early parries. It doesn't look quite as nice as the foot soldier shield, but it will do the same job just as well. I might have gone with the transgressor shield, but it actually has terrible parry frames, even though it is classified as a small shield and looks to share the same durability, not the durability, but the same animation as the buckler and some other shields. But it, its actual parry frames are rather terrible. That's just something to make sure you're paying attention to if you're building like that. I have the relevant throwing knives. I'm actually gonna be heading down there this run because they actually give you a guaranteed bastard sword down there and that's gonna be one of my favorite early weapons. Probably gonna wanna get it before I even face the pursuer. It occurs to me that I did not actually... Oh, where was my backstab? That I did not actually equip the Covetous Silver Serpent Ring. And I pay the price. But now I'm ready for action. Plank. Plank, as you know, I like to get rid of him. He's just a real big annoyance in this little early area. I'm going to drop down and get my Titanite Shard. This brings me up to two total. And there's there's a total of eight accessible in the really early game. So you can get quite a nice variety of weapons. At least slightly up... Ah, oh, goodness. Stupid wall. You can get quite a nice variety of weapons at least slightly upgraded. I knew he was shooting me there. I should not have Estus. And especially because there's a single large Titanite, you can actually get a certain weapon all the way up to plus four right off the bat. There's going to be some more Titanite for me down in the uh, gutter, but I'm going to want to have my Bastard Sword at least to plus four before... It... Thank you. I was like, you going to give me the backstab or not? They seem to be a little bit stingy with that right now. But I want to... Oh, If I was... Paying attention, I could have actually sprinted all the way through to get this human FG before it rolled down, but it didn't let me. You can actually sprint in front of that boulder if you're paying attention or fast enough, but I was already stopping by the time that I needed to be sprinting, so it was out of my hands. There we go, that's his house key. Get his last two dialogues just to make sure he moves over there. And once again, I'm going to skip that item just because it's a really, really worthless single amber herb. And I don't care about it, and it just extends the time that I'm spending in this area. I think that I'm going to end it once I've done a little bit more clearing through here. But honestly, I should be able to almost reach the uh, Pursuer and the last giant before I finish this off. That should be a nice little compromise in length. Kill this guy. What do we get? What do we get? Oh, that's a firebomb. That's nice. That'll mean that we can for sure trigger that little setup right there, but I'm really hoping that I can get one of these guys to drop a great sword, a bastard sword, so that I don't have to head down that side passage, because I like to... Oh, really? It's actually fairly rare for him to get knocked down all the way. Mm, the Spear Wilder all, is already on me, so... The Spear Wilder is actually extremely annoying to parry, because uh, the way that their spear comes out, it doesn't actually have a very normal arc. It's very it comes out in a very strange way and it actually heads right around your shield most of the time so it can be very annoying if you're really trying for the parry versus them and honestly I still haven't found out uh, figured my, out a good way to consistently 
kill the spear wielders. They're just always the bane of my existence down here. I'm considering whether I want to trigger this ambush, and I think I do, and I think that I'm going to be using my witching urns here. Yeah, that seems like the best plan. Because these two over here can come at you with a sprinting attack that can be very obnoxious. But, as we all know, you can hit them in the head and get an instant kill. So, two witching urns for the price of completely nullifying that whole ambush? Yes, please. Is the... No, that's a regular shield. I was like, is that a small shield? Because that looks better than this leather shield. Leather shield is just not a very good looking shield in my opinion. I'm really looking to be rid of it as soon as I can be. But I want to have that option for the small shield parries, so I'm willing to make sacrifices. It's not quite as bad as the, uh, what should we call it? The traveling merchant's hood. So I, I can accept it within the build. It doesn't tear apart the fashion souls, but it it's still not something that I'd choose to keep going with, given the option to substitute it. Ah. Didn't have the stamina for that. One, two, three. Come on. There we go. They just really are being as annoying as they possibly can be today. Really making sure to make my life as miserable as possible. But now I've got a pair of rings and I've cleared this whole ambush. Got some nice tight night to take on home. Once I head home, I can actually grab the three Titanite, and honestly, if I can get a Bastard Sword, I can upgrade it all the way to plus four right now, this very instant, so I'm really hoping to get one of those drops so I don't have to wait until after I've killed the last giant to do that. Come on up. Head on over. That is one of the little bit of annoying parts about this area is that there's a lot of content that's gated behind the um, last giant fight with the soldier key. So it's just something that I've really got to either wait for or hope for a little bit of luck on. And so far, my luck has not been that great, to be honest. I haven't gotten the soldier... I haven't gotten the bastard sword. I didn't get the foot soldiers shield. I haven't really gotten anything that I'm looking to get. There have been a few nice drops of just random stuff, but again, nothing that I'm actually looking for this run. Which is a little bit sad. Come on over. Witching urns, again, just makes such short work of this area. It's really nice. Get my dagger out for the quick little last hit on the fellow who fell down. Come on over. I am just always impressed by the real density of this level. It's got so much all packed into such a tight little space, and it really makes me wish the rest of the game had its same level of density, because honestly, this is just one of the best levels in the game. I really want to bait him into this. There we go. You know, I thought I was going to have more health after that. But apparently not. You know what? I'm a man. We can do this. It's moments like this that I wish you could parry him. Mm, right now, it's just a matter of bait him into attacks and come forward. You know? I could be greedy with my life gems. Or I could play smart. Which do you think I'm going to do? If I'm greedy with my life gems, no. Now I was going to say I could throwing knife both of these spear wielders and not have to worry about the life gem, but I do want to have a pair of these for the archer that's found down the path with the bastard sword, so that's not really an option. Need versus greed, I suppose. It's, it is one of those moments where I, I really hate to use consumables, but... 
that really goes against the theme of this build, so I'm going to force myself out of my comfort zone a little bit. I'm going to be heading right from here all the way back to the bonfire down through the shortcut path, and that's going to be it for this first... Oh! Occasionally, he gets a little bit uppity and thinks that he can survive the witching urn, and occasionally he does, but just be a little bit persistent and you'll get him eventually. Come on through. You can have a pair of spare witching urns, which is nice. Oh. They just don't want to die today. Being very reticent. How dare they. Come down here and grab the shield. It's actually qualified as a regular shield, which kind of sucks because I think it might look a little bit nicer than this leather shield, but goodness, they just don't want to let me replace it just yet. But that's the full circle. I am going to have to head back out there in order, once I've beaten the last giant, to get both the regular soapstone as well as the bastard sword. But for now, I can head back to Majula, spend my souls on some levels, grab up all the stuff out of the mansion, and that should be it for this first episode. Like I said, I am trying to keep it to a more reasonable length of episode, maybe put out a few more episodes rather than keeping them really long. And just one of the things I'm going to struggle with is where to cut it, because a lot of the times I try to cut it once I've cleared a good chunk of the game, but now I'm going to have to be cutting it based on more based on the timing rather than that, so we'll see how that turns out. It's all, there's just so much good loot down here that I am really, really glad that FromSoft put this in here. See, there we go. That's what I'm looking for. It'll help because the axe is not the ideal weapon for this. If you're wanting an ideal weapon, you're going to have to get a blunt weapon out. A blunt weapon is the way to go. But I don't have the stats to wield any of those just yet, so going to have to do it the old-fashioned way, which is apparently parrying, which doesn't make a lot of sense, I'll be honest. Right now, we're still in the midst of the DLC release, so we've got the reskin black steel katana right here. Any of you who want to run a wandering samurai, now is the time. Do not pass this up, because honestly, katanas take forever to get to. You literally have no way to get a katana in the entire game until at least the Iron Keep, and that's a very, very long ways out. So, if you do want to run a katana build, like I said, now is the time. Pick yours up while the getting's good. Maybe even start like a two or three extra characters and just have them grab the katana before setting them aside for later, just in case you want that as an option. I've got a pair of Estus shards to make my Estus a nice little four that it's going to be until at least the best deal, but there we have it. Level myself up some. Going to want to get my strength and dex up to reasonable amounts. Yeah, that'll allow me to use the short sword. And with just four more levels from there, I can use the bastard sword once I get it, which will be nice. The whatchamacallit, the explorer doesn't have a really nice starting stat spread, but that's not going to matter much because I fully intend to be going into everything I can since I want a little bit of pyromancy and dark magic to round out the build and finish the Pharos Flare. So that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all next time. Have a good day.